Hey, my microphone. Hey, on Wednesday, May 10th, episode 225 of the 359 podcast. I'm BBG, and in the house for what is an alleged repeat of 420, we have Ben yep. Fox, Ruben, and Alfred Ng. Good morning. Good Wait, morning, what? good morning. What does this have to do with 420? Because it's like weed. We're, we're talking about weed today. Did we talk about weed on 420? I I mean, no, I'm saying no, we're past really. the date 420. Oh, what does 420 have to do with weed? Come on. I'm, I'm already feeling pretty Shut high right now. <laughs> Shut it down, everybody. Okay, so uh, Alfred wrote quite a few pretty impressive stories, and so we'll be okay. leaning on you. We'll be leaning on you for the podcast today. We're going to be talking about a vending machine that includes biometric scanner, so you could potentially verify age and therefore buy weed and booze like through a vending machine, like a normal person, like a normal person. <laughs> and uh, also, our second part of our series on West Point. This one focused on uh, the cyber defense exercise. That's an annual competition. Uh, to do like mock cyber defense war games, I guess is what you could call it. Uh, also, a little bit more on the Echo Show and a plug to Microsoft Build, which is going on right now. Uh, as always, send in your questions and comments. BVG will get to as many as he can at the end of the show. Without further ado, let's podcast. In three, two. Welcome to the 359. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. A company called American Green Machine is developing a smart vending machine that could develop, oh, sorry, that could dispense weed and beer thanks to biometric scanner that could verify someone's age. It's not available to the public yet, but it could be a quicker way to dispense way too expensive beer at the ballpark. Alfred, you got a chance to check out this thing. What did you think? I mean, I think it's pretty interesting that it can like cut people off after they've gotten too much. So. At a, at a stadium, if you go and buy like five beers from like one side of the stadium and then the bartender, there's like, you know, you're not give we're not giving you any more drinks. You look pretty wasted. Yes, that. But then you could go to the other side of the stadium where there's another bar there and then that person doesn't recognize you. And then you just buy more beers from that guy. Yeah, but so like the, the, that's the whole point of these machines, where it's like it recognizes you based off who you are and you're like, based on your account and you're like biometric. So it doesn't have a fingerprint reader. It has a um, vein reader where it doesn't like stab in. It's like a, a infrared laser that scans your insides, kind of like an X-ray, but not as intrusive. Mm -hmm. um, and it scans your veins, which is a, you know more unique than your fingerprints are. Like identical twins, like still have like different veins on the inside. My mind is blown. Yeah, so it it, it bases it off of that. So it's able to like kind of like limit you, um, and, and it follows you on your, on your account. So like if I go to one vending machine on one side and I go to the other vending machine, it know like. Hey, dude, like we cut you off after like five drinks. <laughs> yeah, but like how soon is this going to get to the public? Well, they're aiming to get this in dispensaries and, you know, stadiums and casinos within the next like two months or so. They're in talks. Sweet. With, they're in talks in places in like San Francisco, Las Vegas and in like the tri-state area in like New York, Connecticut, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Um as far as like dispensaries goes, it's it's like kind of an easier way for them to like store it in there, and then like people can come like after hours, like they don't really need like a guy working there and like manning security for it and all that stuff. The challenge is that they can't do it with a credit card yet, so it's like either cash or like debit for now because um, dispensaries like are a cash operation, so right. that that's gonna be kind of frustrating. And they don't they don't tell your age by like your fingerprint or anything like that though. It's it's kind of like a bar where it, there's there's a per you have to get an account set up by a physical person. So you still have to go and like show your ID first, mm -hmm. and then that person sees your ID, sees you, is like, okay, let me make an account for you. And then after that, you don't have to show your ID anymore. You can just go and put your finger in and get the marijuana. Sweet. What could possibly go wrong, Alfred? You also wrote about the cyber defense exercise at West Point. It's an annual competition that requires cadets to build a server and protect it from NSA hackers. What was it like being there? I mean, it's really cool what they're doing uh, for like military cadets to kind of learn about cybersecurity and cyber defense because it's such an important aspect of, you know, warfare. Our gonna, future. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you, you look at all the hacks that happened in just like the last year alone and you take a look at, you know, what these cadets are doing. As cool as it sounds, though, it like was not like that like crazy like whenever you you imagine yeah, it like was, cyber I was, defense yeah. i was there with you and it was it was kind of uh chill while we were there but it, you know it, it tends to go up and down also wanted to mention there's a startup called nucleus which claims that uh it basically its idea for uh a touch screen enabled intercom got ripped off 
by Amazon with the Echo Show. Are, are you buying that? Do you see some similarities there? I mean, I think it has the same shape, but I don't buy that at all. Like to say that like, oh, they stole our idea to have a screen. I don't like, know. All right, all right, it's, like, it's Alexa enabled. It's got a touch screen. It's got an intercom. Plus, Amazon is its biggest investor. OK, there's, but there's my point, my there. point is that, like, you know how like Ford is like announcing their whole like car, like Alexa enabled car. OK. And all? Yeah. Imagine yeah, yeah. like if like after like a year or two years from now, Amazon comes out with like their own like Alexa enabled car. Then Ford's not going to be like, oh, they stole our idea for a, a car. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. OK. Like it's a screen. <laughs> okay, it's a it's a screen, it's a car. Last, we just wanted to mention that we are covering Microsoft Build, uh, which is going on right now. Expect to see more Cortana skills, a bunch of AR and VR stuff. Check that out. Uh, if you want to read more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ang. Thanks for listening. So we got a question in the chat from Matthew Datcher. He says, how big is the company that will be storing our biometric data? Will it be nationwide? And how secure will they keep our information? So we have a legitimate concern yes. about this. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I thought we were just going to crack jokes all day. No, um, no, that, that was a legitimate concern of mine question. too when, when I was it checking is. them out. Um, they didn't have their CTO on deck for me to like kind of probe into a little bit more, but they basically said um, it's as secure as we can make it, which <laughs> is I feel not, so comfortable. Yeah, but it's, it's supposed to be nationwide. It runs it basically runs on the cloud. But the thing is, is that their Wi-Fi data entry point is that's not their own security. So the, these are these vending machines are connected to the cloud and they have a thing in the back that you can either plug an Ethernet port into or a um, like a motor, like a Wi-Fi card kind of thing like a Verizon or like T-Mobile, at and whatever, just any kind of like mobile hotspot kind of thing that makes it connect to the cloud. But the problem with that is that that's basically the onus is on the uh, vendors in that mm -hmm. case. Like if I bought one of these vending machines and I personally put in a Wi-Fi card where all this data, all your biometric data, all your account information, all that is going online and it's connected definitely to you because that is your like vein data and all that stuff. Um, and I just don't set a password for it. Like that's, it could be a problem. Yeah. That's on. So uh, tell me if I'm wrong about this, but if some of my information is going to get stolen, I feel like I'd rather my vein data get stolen. Okay. Than, like, well, my it's, it's not, it's number. not about that though. The issue is that it like, because it's tied to your account, it's kind of like your Amazon where like it remembers all the things that you've ordered. Mm hmm. So, right, I'm, but it doesn't have my credit card on file. Yes, I mean, it, it should. But it's, it's got your it, veins on file. Well, this that's is not, how, this is that's how that's Blade not, Runner got started well, that's with replicants. Not, that's not the it's, point, though. Like, There you go. You're right. That's what I was trying to get the, at. The point isn't about, like, oh, just because it doesn't have your credit card information. You look at, like, a dispensary in, like, Nevada that had their, like, logs of people that, like, used their dispensary, like, leaked online. Mm -hmm. And then it's just like, okay, well, this person, like, smokes, like, this much weed. And then this person, like bought like that's the thing there's the risk of like that data being leaked where it's basically you know oh like ben bought like 20 pounds of weed from this <laughs> dispensary uh Last time you bought weed. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you're not watching, Mom. I don't it's like. Okay. I definitely. I, I know. Yeah. It's it's, it's a it, lot of weed. I I wouldn't really care that much if people had my vein data number one and number two if they knew how many beers I drunk drank. Well, that's the other I'm thing too. Wasted. Like it's like Ben bought twenty pounds of alcohol. Twenty pounds of alcohol. <laughs> I think we need to rework your measurements. <laughs> Look, uh, it's the imperial system, right? It's the old <laughs> <laughs> the only way I'm doing it. <laughs> so we have a few back and forth in the chat about whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. Doesn't as seem far like a as good just idea. from the distribution standpoint, like mm -hmm. whether or not you agree or disagree with uh, drug and paraphernalia is beyond this conversation. This is about does this make it more secure? Does it make it more reliable? Does it? It at least it makes, it, makes it more. Would convenient. you be interested? We want to hear from you if you are, in fact, a, and this is by no means some kind of like confession. Do you think that you would use a system like this if you were to allegedly uh, purchase these substances? It makes it more reliable. Trying to be like, as PC from as like a, here. from like a vendor's like standpoint, where basically like you buy one of these machines and it's like twenty thousand dollars, which is a lot of money, but like you compare it to like the salary of like a uh, like a pharmacist or like a bartender, and then it's only it's like five hundred dollars a month for like. Upkeep. Hey, wait a minute! Is this an automation story? I mean, Are you putting could... bartenders and pharmacists out of work because I can't get on board with that. Well, no. yeah, I, I also go to vending machines. That vending and machine's not going to listen to my sob yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I put my finger in it. <laughs> 
just okay. like the regular bartender. Wait. <laughs> Matthew Datcher also asks, how long until the first weed vending machine gets knocked over and stolen with a pickup? Truck? Great, yeah, that's the thing. great I, point. Great point. I, I asked them about that, and then they basically said, like, well, wouldn't they rather steal, like, an ATM that has cash in it? I'm like, well, it has marijuana. But the, the other thing is they have a camera up front on it, and it's always connected to the cloud, so that data is, like, always there. Um, which is another creepy aspect of this machine because it, it's like wired for like facial recognition. So like if it sees like a, a, a man or a woman going up to it, it'll like serve up like a different ad based on like what gender it is which not, or age. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's totally normal. Mm -hmm. um, I have very feminine features. So I, I hope that I don't get the wrong ads. We have a number of people in the chat who think like, let's just stick with the old way of doing this. Sure. I mean, um, it's luck. It's an idea. You what is see, the point? What is the it's point a novelty of CNET? right now. What is the point of CNET if not to just tell you all the stuff that we're that's being I mean, in development, and some of it's going to stick, and I some can, of it isn't. I could see this being used in like some kind of like pharmaceutical aspect, not like the kind of pharmacist where you need like you know a, a proper amount of dosage or anything like that, but like Robitussin or like Tylenol and things like that, because like a lot of like pharmacies will cut off like. If you try to buy like X amount of cough syrup because mm -hmm. you're trying to do like cough syrup things, like 20 pounds of cough syrup. I like um, to do cough syrup things. <laughs> um, but you're not allowed to buy a certain amount of it or like a certain amount of like certain kinds of medicine. So that, that was just called doing tussin when I was growing up. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing um, is, is, the thing is, is that like I could go to like one CVS and then like walk over like across town or to like take the train to and, a right into like Queens and then go to another one kind of thing. And then next thing you know i have 20 pounds of cough syrup so the thing is with this is that like because it knows based off like your veins like print that like it would effectively be able to block you from like all their machines not yeah. just like one of them i think the most viable use case for this is in a stadium because there are tons of lines yeah. especially between innings or during like halftime or something those lines get really, really long. It's really frustrating and annoying. Wait, if you, you can could, get weed at a football game now? No, I'm talking about the beer part. Uh, so if you could do faster dispensing with that, that would just help out the folks. I don't think that it's that no would get than rid than of... It's no different than a kiosk at a movie theater. Yeah. Right, but I don't think that it would get rid of the people behind the counter. It's not like automation would all of a sudden replace them. They're already like completely flooded with orders. This would just speed things up a yeah. little bit more and actually allow the stadium to potentially get more more beer sold mm -hmm. and danny green does point out that it'd be easy to abuse this you can just you know call over your buddy and say right. shove your finger in here we're good to go yeah totally agreed i mean yeah a phrase but i did not think about in advance of saying it ben, on the air ben brought this up to me before <laughs> but like i mean you can do you can literally do the same thing with like a human being where like you can ask somebody to go if you're not 21 yet you can ask somebody to go to the store and buy beers for you so, I mean, nobody has ever done that yeah, in the yeah, history yeah. of mankind. Uh, Danny Green ex uh, expands on this. There's an issue to buy marijuana like that because it's a f it's federally illegal to sell. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're yeah. still waiting for the states to kind of roll out and get on board and synchronize. Yeah, up right, with this. Which is why, why it's which we cash based. That's why yeah. it's cash based only. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if the system is access to phone lines or Internet, there could be a federal problem so essentially we're looking at Great. you know getting hunted down very good point and then danny green and very always uh, a stupid. good very good last name for this type of conversation eh. i don't get it okay oh god alfred uh chris <laughs> wesley uh old buddy chris wesley says yes i feel like there's going to be a lot of legal hoops i'll have to jump through just to get this even going and that's very true like i well, think, I think that's why they're more in colorado i think that's why they're California. starting slow with you know like they're like Weed is obviously a part of it, like even with their name, like American Green Machine. But <clears> like, <throat> I think they're focusing on the things that they can do legally now with like right the medical beer, I mean, or like medical marijuana at at, at its mm -hmm. own is yeah. a more viable option. Chris yeah. points out. Uh, um, yeah, it, it, for now it's a novelty. We'll they see also where it takes they, us. they also like told me like oh you can also buy like maybe we're also thinking about maybe putting like sex toys in there or like Viagra and I'm like. Why would I want my Why my would vein, I need my biometric scanner? Yeah, why would I that? want my vein associated with that? I think the only reason to hand over your biometric information for something like this would be for like age age restricted items. Sure. Mm -hmm. So like sex toys doesn't really strike me as oh, um, God, no. <laughs> like why would like or Viagra or something. Like those two examples don't really like make as much sense to me. All right, uh, change in direction a little bit before we get out of here today. Beefy Tech is asking for a shout out. Shout out to Beefy Tech. Shout out to Beefy Tech. We're just handing out shout outs like that. Yeah, now? of course. I What's call up, the Beefy shots Tech? here. Okay, okay. Fine. Uh, shout outs to Beefy Tech. So we were talking about what was the name of this echo competitor again? Uh, nucleus. The Nucleus. Uh, so Beefy Tech wants to know what do we think of this new echo design that the Nucleus is competing with? 
Um, so the, specifically, the what we our reaction to this Amazon show. I will say, I will say that Amazon totally could have gone with a different shape, but because it does look exactly like the nucleus. Oh, really? It, now that we're not doing the formal podcast, well, no, I'm saying, board? I'm saying that they copied them. Say, like they're arguing, like, oh, they copied us because they put a screen on. I'm like, there's different arguments to be had here. Where like maybe come up with a different form factor for your screen. We all ripped it off from the Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I, I, I think the 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 most problematic part about this is that and, and I mentioned this in my story, Amazon has been a partner with Nucleus. Amazon is an investor. Amazon engineers worked with Nucleus to develop the Nucleus. And then uh, they created what the Nucleus people would argue is essentially a copycat. How could uh, they copy something that they helped to develop? I mean, that's and there funded. Is a, I'm not even going to answer that. Why are we? <laughs> we're already having a conversation about copycat. This Amazon thing just became aware yesterday. We just became aware of it. You know, it's that's like saying like, well, Ford copied Chevy or vice versa or however the hell that worked Look, out. Look, I, I, it's it's very hard to say exactly. There's going like, to be whether competitive it's a copycat or not. Phone manu- like video phone manufacturing. That's called competition. That's mm-hmm. that's the basis of. Capitalism, like that's. I guess I don't know. I mean, I like it's this, this like a serious 30, like step back. It's it's like, it's like a thirty person startup that has to now go up against Amazon, and Amazon may have like just completely squashed their business. So you know, to a certain level, I empathize with you know this, the small business people that run Nucleus that thought that they had a good partner with Amazon, and now they're they're pretty jaded and annoyed that they feel like their ideas got stolen. Uh, going enough. back to the initial question. As far as what do I think of the form factor of the Amazon, the Echo Show, I don't think it looks nearly as slick as it should. I mean, like, why is it such a big, chunky item? I almost feel like maybe they should have been able to, like, have you put it on the wall so it doesn't take up yeah. counter when you, space. When you bring up, like, the Jetsons, I think of it, it's like a very, like, retro futuristic thing. It looks like something, like, I traveled back into, like, 1950. And then, like, I went to, like, World's Fair. I was like, this yeah. is what will be in the future. I'm like, Video this phones. looks really stupid now. But, like... You have a phone. Is it does the same thing as your phone? And then like, it's basically a house smartphone. Like, imagine if you had your phone and you just stuck it right. on a dock at home at all times. That's yeah, what this like is. It's like your new landline. It's maybe. Yeah, and it's such a step backwards. Like, have a landline. Like, we can make calls on it now. You know what else you can make calls on your phone? <laughs> it's, it makes no sense. Like it, the phone feature, which I will admit is kind of cool on the on the Echo, where like. When I have that at home. Like, oh, I'm actually excited to yeah. enable that when I get home tonight. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like to buy a whole new product just for that, like if you have an Echo already, like awesome. That's like a great like additional feature. But like to spend like to shell out like $230 to do that when like you literally carry something like this in your pocket at all times is completely absurd to me. Okay. I still that's like the access. I mean, I'm not, I'm pretty indifferent to it, but I like the idea of having something that's designed to be there to hold my recipes, to show me tutorials. Like, I like to cook, so that is very appealing to me. But again, like I said, I already mounted a nook on my refrigerator, so... I also just grab my phone, and I just look at that, and I follow that along. Having a little bit bigger screen would help, though, when you're trying to, you know, use both hands to cook, and so on and so forth. By the way, I do want to caveat that none of us have actually seen this product in person. So we're looking at photos just like you all are. Uh, we're probably not going to get one into the office for another couple of weeks because it doesn't ship until mm-hmm. June 28th. So uh, it, my initial impressions are that this doesn't really look very sleek, but at the same time, I haven't had a chance to like hold it, you know, put it on my kitchen counter. So after we, I, I do want to throw that disclaimer out there. Well, after we discussed it yesterday, it made me think like maybe they want it to kind of fade into the background. They don't want it to be a centerpiece. Mm-hmm. Like that could very well have been a, a, a design choice on their part because everything else you know like the echo dot it's very minimal they want it to kind of you know just sink in and become part of the furniture Mm -hmm. and you know they want the large screen but they don't want it to be gaudy maybe that was an intention i mean i think voice assistants in the home are like really cool and like i have mine and enjoy mine i just i think the one with the screen and like being able to like video chat and all that stuff i think it's going to go the way of like the tablet where like i think people are going to buy it i think people are going to like it and think it's really cool but like the upgrade cycle is going to be like super slow. And then like the people are just not going to be buying them Very after like point. two, three years. Very good point. Two, three. Yeah. Like the, the replacement cycle for something like yeah. this, especially There's if they no don't way. change the form factor, could be like seven years. Yeah. Like once you have it, like what would really. Think about how often people replace the land, their, their landlines back when they had landlines. Like you buy one and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what like that's the way this is going for that for the, Maybe. the Amazon look. Maybe. It hasn't Not come low, out sorry. yet. So to close it up for the day, uh, we kind of lightly touched on this yesterday, but do we think that this is going to uh, uh, encourage even more in-home development for Amazon? Smart fridge, smart vacuum, I don't know. In a word, yes. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, you that's know, a gonna... the clock is ticking <laughs> until you get like a, an Amazon Ikea bundle, fo- like a full home build. We talked about this. Yeah. The Amazon house. You just move in and it's a house. And like one of the, I, I think one of the smartest it ships ways. It you in two days if you have Prime. One of the smartest ways to think about this too is that you're essentially paying Amazon $230 to have a screen that goes directly to Amazon.com right in front of your face in your kitchen or your bedroom or wherever else you want it. And there is no other retailer out there that can offer that to you. There's not a Walmart.com device in your house that's just there to sell you Walmart stuff. Uh, Expanding on one more comment from Beefy Tech asking about what's up with the new Fire TV. I think that the next logical step for them now that they've put this video phone in your kitchen is to finally just manufacture an Amazon Fire TV, like an actual... TV television set. Yeah, not yeah just maybe not like a lot a, of money. In maybe TVs. like a Fire. I mean, phone Roku too. did it. Y- but you're talking about oh yeah, Roku an actual television set, right? But like they integrated in the hardware. with somebody else, right? Amazon yeah. could easily do that, but I think that's an, another logical step where it just becomes part of the ether. You know, you had the TVs with the built-in DVD player. Now mm-hmm. the TV with the built-in Fire Stick. It could happen. I think that's a, a logical move for them, but that's just speculation. I'd like Me, to it, see, like to see what what Google comes out with now. Apple may come out with its own, you know, uh, voice assistant, smart speaker. I mean, like in in a lot of ways, Amazon. Uh, you know, here's the footsteps behind them. There's a lot more competition coming down the pike as far as these different smart speakers are concerned. Imagine Soggy brings it all home for us. I think the Echo Show is just a bigger way to funnel customers to buy more on Amazon. There you go, buddy. Hail the you overlords. ain't wrong. Shout out to Imagine Soggy. <laughs> Let's wrap it up. All right. Oh, that's my job. You do it. <laughs> Oops. Okay. The 359 Podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, and... CNET, baby. Of course, on CNET. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you around. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.